Hey, welcome back to the channel, Matt Money. Uh, I am Matt, for those of you guys that don't know me. I'm the gentleman that actually uses Palantir on Palantir Weekly, and the gentleman that actually likes to correct people when they try to give Palantir a lot of crap about their software. Because at the end of the day, a lot of these people that are actually on Palantir Weekly or Palantir and give their bearish opinion have never even opened up an instance. I, on the other hand, have been using Foundry for about six to seven years. And the reason why I'm making this video is we were fortunate enough to have some of the Palantir developers come out and uh, over Teams, of course, show us the demonstration about Palantir AIP. And Palantir AIP, for those of you guys who don't know, is an AI platform that's specifically tying into Foundry and Gotham, as I anticipated, um, which was very con gave me a lot of self-conviction because I think a lot of people thought it was just a standalone product. So in order for you to be able to use AIP, you need to be utilizing Foundry, Gotham, or any potential future other operating systems that might be created at Palantir um, for organizations or on enterprises out there. And AIP is a plugin that is a user interface like ChatGPT3 or BARD or anything like that um, that allows you to move around with super efficiency. And so while I have some video data about what we saw and what were demonstrated for about 10 to 15 minutes the other day. Um, it wouldn't be fair to me. It wouldn't be fair to the company uh, that I work for, Undisclosed Oil Company. And it wouldn't be fair to the Palantirians that have been working so hard to be able to make this uh, possible to be able to be rolled out in the next two weeks or so. So what I will be sharing, this is a quick rendition of what I am acknowledging uh, as one of the greatest efficiencies that will be made since I started using Foundry six, seven years ago. Uh, and truly when I was watching this presentation, I was laughing because of how right I was with respect to how it connects up into Foundry. And then two, just how brilliant uh, this technology really is, being able to connect the private databases that we have at Undisclosed Oil Company with use cases that people might email into you or weather cases that might delay things. And you str truly start to see with this demonstration the efficiencies. And it's not going to be life-changing, but what it will do is make super efficiencies, right? Just like BARD, it's probably not going to be life-changing for you, but it might th make things way quicker. It might be able to write an email for you. It might be able to write a novel for you. Things that might have taken 20, 30 times longer than what might have taken you, um, you know, allows you to, to be super efficient. And the same thing with tying into AIP. It's going to allow you to tie into multiple applications at once where, you know, as you pull it up, right, you pull up your Foundry instance on Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge, and you start being able to do your work. But instead, you pull up AIP, which is their user interface. And instead of having to go back and forth between all these different things, uh, you're really going to be able to just use the user interface and be able to connect up and let the AI do the work for you after, of course, all this AI has been set up with guide rails, large language models to be able to understand exactly what you're trying to put into its user interface. So before I get kicked off on the example, I'd like to say I finally listened to everybody and got uh, Peter Thiel's book Zero to One. So I will be excited to be able to read that. And I think it goes very well with this video as obviously Peter Thiel is one of the co-founders of Palantir. It's taken me forever. I've had multiple people, Amit, several others, reach out and say, dude, like, have you read it? You know, let me give you an example from it. And now I'll finally be able to understand what they're saying. You know, most of the time, everything that they say that are so intelligent goes right over my head. Now I'll actually be able to understand. So back to what's important, right? Back to AIP, back to the demonstration we got. Basically what it was is, you know, when you get and you work in a large company or anything like that, everything's run off of email, right? So Think of this as an email to email communication, right? All of us are mostly integrators. We get an email from somebody, it results in a firefight within the organization. You're gonna to have to basically interpret what you're kind of seeing, do some work, find out some other information, relay to the important stakeholders, what is exactly wrong or what does this mean monetarily? That's exactly what this demonstration did. In this example, it provided an idea as to a supply chain company that was able to make deliveries or deliver products to somebody else. This person who is, I guess, a supply chain manager within the organization gets an email. Wow, this particular product or a part of a product is going to be delayed. So this is going to impact your backlog associated with your warehouse. So boom, 
what does the person do? They take this email, they put it into the AIP user interface. They say, boom, how many products do we have here? It pulls it up. Um, 1300 of those total products, 1100 of which have already been shipped. The remaining 200 will be impacted. Boom. This person looks, they said, oh my God, you know, how many other, uh, warehouses might be impacted by this? No other warehouses will be impacted by it. Okay. It's specifically focused on this warehouse. You think I'm saying things very clearly, this warehouse, other warehouses, these are all things that are going to have to be put into the user interface. Uh, or sorry, AIP as guide rails, as uh, large language models, that you're going to have to train your particular piece of AI to be able to work in Foundry, Gotham, what have you. So that being said, back to the story, this person was able to say, wow, okay, this is going to be impacted. These 200 pieces are not going to be able to go out on time. What kind of monetary value does that have? Boom, type it in to the user interface. What type of monetary value do these two item, 200 items that have yet to be shipped have? In this case, it's $50 million. They take this, they look at any other potential opportunities, anywhere else they may be able to source data, what have you. They can't. Um, in this case, it's a monetary hit of $50 million. Um, whether that's delayed or canceled, I don't really remember in that particular example. But this person was unable to understand 200 of these products will be delayed based off of this email that they got, the AIP was able to in integrate that into what was going to uh, be shipped out later to put delay to those actions. Uh, and then that uh, AIP user interface was then able to, with prompt, be able to understand what stakeholders needed to be contacted. It wrote up an email specifically talking about what facility was potentially impacted by this, how many products were impacted by this, what the monetary value was impacted by this, just like you would do in ChatGPT or BARD or anything like that, but integrating with the private data that was provided by this email and provided by what was already in Foundry. So you have to think, this means that your product is not just going to come up to speed out of nowhere, utilizing public data to be able to utilize and be um, very useful for your particular company. It has to be running off of the operating system of Foundry, utilizing applications of Foundry. And I was having conversations with one of my friends on my, um, on my way home from work the other day. And we were talking specifically about how useful this is going to be within our organization to just keep track of information. Uh, the fact that, to just be blunt, uh, we have about 35 applications within our organization these days, of which I'm proficient at about five and another five that I'm familiar with. Utilizing AIP's user interface will be able to integrate all 35 of those without me probably having to open up a lot of them, um, which is huge, right? Something so simple as somebody saying, you know, what's the production on this well? Instead of me particularly looking up, pulling up the data, uh, you can pull up a chart specifically associated with it as they did in the AIP um, example that they provided the other day uh, with this warehouse example pulls up a chart. You can take that chart. You can copy it into an email. You can do whatever you want to kind of demonstrate instead of having to pull up the application, click away, you know, pull up a specific, um, a specific well file or specific facility file or facility inventory. You can basically just ask the user interface to, to access that on your behalf. So it's something that isn't necessarily going to be, uh, you know, brand new, right. But at the same time, it's going to make you 10 to 20 times more efficient. That interaction without AIP, I'm anticipating would have taken at least half hour to an hour to be able to integrate all the different uh, pieces of information, go across different applications within a foundry, which the fact that it's in foundry as a whole already is light years ahead of where I'd say most organizations are. The ability to be able to pull up that data is light years ahead of where most facilities and, and supply chain managers are. So the fact that you're now putting a lightning layer on top of it is something that is truly, truly uh, just mind blowing. And it made me giggle uh, just knowing how I was interpret interpreting it to go. Things are going well, right, with the whole thing. Uh, and it's just really brilliant to kind of see what's going on in AIP and what's going on at Palantir. And I'm really looking forward to the actual demo that they provide uh, and what you guys think of it in the future. But I'm hoping that this was useful for you guys and gave you insights. And uh, yeah, with that, I'll kick it over and I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below and I'll uh, talk to you guys soon. Cheers.